Hey everybody, it's Jochen Hayden, and I'm back with the Helsin vs. Hayden version 2. This is scenario 2, I'm playing Japan, he's playing Allies, and let's get it going. 12th of December, 1941. Okay, looks like we grabbed Vegan, which is pretty interesting because there's a an Allied unit kind of stuck in the middle. Okay, let's see what we get here. Oh, okay, okay. So we encountered them, so then what happens? <laughs> I want to see the encounter. Okay, now this is a bombardment that I ordered against this pesky little commando unit because yesterday they shut my attack down pretty good. So I figured the ground troops need a little bit of a, a boost here to kind of disrupt them a bit. <laughs> and it didn't really do much at all. I don't even know if they even hit them. Okay, we're just grabbing some dot bases here. Keeping up with that uh, Solomon's land grab, if you know what I'm saying. There we go. I My intention is to leave no dot base uncaptured because uh, if you guys watched the Desert Wolf campaign I covered, Desert Wolf put some sneaky stuff in and it was able to spot Kiru Butai in the DEI before it, left, before it left because there was a dot base that he hadn't taken. So uh, my intent is to not leave any dot bases within my range of control, untaken. Okay, let's go. Let's get some, let's get, there we go. So we got a single destroyer. They probably won't be able to do a whole lot, but it looks like we caught up to a tanker and a reasonably sized cargo ship. Maybe these are two tankers, I don't know. So we're starting off with a long lance attack. Yeah, here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Right off the bat, one torpedo, man. That's what I'm talking about. Nice. These guys are getting away. Mikazuki, huh? I'm liking this guy. Let's look up this captain when we're done. Uh, he had some darn fine torpedo gunnery right there. Nice. Alright, I think we know how this is going to go. Awesome. Awesome. All right, 25 shell hits. That thing tanked a lot. Uh, one torpedo was all it took to take the governor right out. Nicely nicely done. Two kills for this guy. He's on my uh, he's on my good list right now. Mikazuki. So I would say the Chokai and the Mikazuki are definitely on my list of uh, favorite ships right now. Because they're some of the few ships that have actually engaged in surface-to-surface -surface combat and have some kills to their names. All right, let's get these guys. Yeah, let's get them. Nice. So this is a single AK or an AKL. I'm not quite sure. Uh, these are just torpedo boats, but they have plenty of firepower to take this guy out. All right, it's just a it's just an AKL. Not much to see here. So we got it. We knew we would. Okay, so that's it for naval combat this turn. I'm I'm satisfied with that. That means that's uh, another turn we don't have to deal with the allies shooting up our ships. Look at all those! Look at all those subs! Dang! Oh, this is crazy, man! Come on! Look at all those subs! Fortunately, I have some... Okay, good. We do have a fair amount of of um, ASW aircraft up. So if we keep those subs spotted, they shouldn't really be able to do as much damage to us, right? 
I swear to God, if Takao's air mission gets canceled due to bad weather again, come on! Gosh, it's three days in a row! I can't believe it. Three days in a row, we've had bad weather where we couldn't fly on Hong Kong. That's really going to set me back. We could have taken that place two days ago, but if we're not hitting it, we... We're not disrupting the troops enough, so I <laughs> I don't have a good answer for that. All right, so we're hitting these guys here. Uh, what is this? This is the 61st Chinese Corps. They're moving into position here to try to block us, trying to get through down towards Xi'an. All right, so we do get some good disruption on these guys this time around. Uh, they don't have a lot of squads to begin with, so everyone we take out is going to help us take that place. Go oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff right there. Okay, so we have the Chinese Corner Group Army heading towards Nanyang. So mad about the Hong Kong stuff. And there we go, flying five bombers again. Why are we doing this? We need to put way more aircraft on this. Now, ah, okay, there we go. That's better. That's better. Come on, let's get some more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess we only needed five aircraft for that, right? Perfect. I think the President Madison's finished. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> That's like four or five torpedoes. They're done. Yeah, we got it. Five, okay. Five bombers, five torpedo hits. That's some accuracy. I'm impressed. In, in this case, I'm not complaining. It only We needed five bombers. We took it out. That's a high value target to me. Excellent. Well, so much for my sweep. This weather is really killing me here. Look at this, two, two Oscars sweeping. This is some pathetic coordination. So all we're seeing here is I'm trying to disrupt these troops. Oh, okay. Let's keep note of that. There's a construction regiment in this hex. That's hardly any thing worth bombing. Oh. Thanks for the sweeps, guys. Pretty heavy bombing attack going in on um, Georgetown. We definitely want to soften these guys up for when we when we when we actually attack it this turn, because we are definitely attacking it. There we go. I want to see destroyed squads. Good stuff. Okay, and this is a bombing raid on Rangoon. I'm just kind of testing the waters here. Let's see what they got. Look at that. Wow, we have PBY-4s in Rangoon. So this is very telling. These PBY-4s, I can guarantee you they came out of the Philippines. So I think this is actually a good thing for me because that means that those PBYs are not in the Philippines spotting my ships. I think that honestly, that's a huge mistake for him because he, we're going to talk about it. When we look at the turn, I want to show you what he's not seeing right now because he doesn't have those guys in the Philippines still. I think this is a mistake. Okay. These are just harassment bombings. I'm just trying to slow down the troops. Let's see what we got here. 
This is 88th Chinese Corps, okay? Okay, let's see what we have here. It looks like he's trying to evacuate these these guys. I'm thinking. Nope, oh, there's a miss. That's a miss. Come on, guys. Wow. 14 torpedo. What? Wait. Did we use 14 torpedoes on this guy and we missed every single drop? Thanks for the sweeps, guys. Better late than never, I guess, right? Uh, so far, I'd say that AM phase is pretty dang disappointing. Weather's killing us. Coordination is killing us. It's just it's not good. Look at all those subs. Hopefully we get a little better luck. This weather. Okay, let's hit it this time, huh? Nope. My Air Force sucks right now. That's all I got to say. Just not, not getting it done. Can we kill this, please? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, well, that was a bunch more torpedoes wasted on an AKL. I'm sure there's higher value targets to hit than that. Oh my goodness, what a joke of an air phase. Well, we have some big plans for this turn for the land combat. So let's hope it goes well. I really need it to. Uh, oh, I guess we're going now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I wasn't quite ready for that, but <laughs> let's go. You ready for this, guys? Here we go. There we go. We are landing the 21st Division at Wenchow. And these guys were in... Sing, uh, uh, was it Shanghai? I thought I had them set to go next turn. <laughs> but uh, hey, that's cool. Um, we'll go now. Ow! Look at this. Landing in, la la landing in Malbon. Alright, we have the 33rd Regiment coming ashore here. And this is part of the 16th Division that's already on uh, Luzon. So we're actually going to meet in the middle at Manila. We're going to come from the south and the north. Okay, and we're landing at uh, Niku now. Okay. Hope this goes well. Okay, Georgetown. Looks like we're going to get this one pretty easily. I only hope that we don't kill all these guys outright. It looks like we might.
Ah, uh, that's not what I wanted to happen, but, you know, it's, it's fine, I guess. I was hoping we wouldn't kill them outright, because I wanted to use these guys to slingshot down into Taiping. However, at least there's zero opposition, and we've cleared it, and now we can head down the road. Uh, it's, it's, it is what it is, right? Okay, we have a shock attack here. We're trying to clear this rail line. I'm hoping we just kill this unit outright. Because I just want to clear them off the rail line. Ah! Okay, well that's fine too. We've cleared the rail line. at the. I really needed this rail line opened up. Because now that, that gets me um, supplies and resources flowing all through China without anything in the way. So I can, I can deal with this. Good losses there. Hong Kong, I don't have any illusions of this going particularly well because we had zero bombing go in to help. Nothing. So let's see. Ah! <sighs> Alright, so again, day two. But equal amount of losses, however, they have way more destroyed squads than we do. And on top of that, we've got their forts down to one. So maybe one more day, we should have them. All right. This is our deliberate attack here. This is where that shock attack thing went down yesterday. and It was kind of weird. I think we can get these guys now. There, we got them. That, oh, okay. Or you can retreat back in the wrong direction. That's fine too, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. I'll take that. So we take zero casualties. Zero. And the allies take all these. And then we have a deliberate attack here. This should be a blowout. And hopefully they retreat this way and we can pincer them in this direction. Okay, another win. Okay, cool. And then we're taking two loggy. Nice. Caviang, I think we got him this time. I think we got him. Yes. Nice. I think we prepped it a little bit better this time. Perfect. And we're coming in at Milne Bay. Grab that one too. Hollandia. This one should be no big deal. Alright. This, I don't know if we're going to do good. Because the, the train's not great. Let's see what we get. Oh! Oh! Nice. Oh, that was great. Okay, I didn't think this would go down like that. Um, yeah, look at this. So I only have two SNLF units committed to that whole operation. And we dislodged these guys. And we can continue clearing the road to Temelo with a minimal amount of force. This is really good. Now, when we run into the guys from Quanton, it's going to be a little bit bigger of an issue. But uh, I'll take that for now. All right, now this is not going to go well. I predicted that this would happen. Yeah. I was worried about this, guys. <sighs> yeah. So, that's not so great. Uh, my parachute unit that was at Cabinet Tuan definitely got blown out. But what are we going to do against the tank battalion? So, that wasn't so hot. But, I mean... I knew that was going to be a thing. Okay. Allies are bombarding back at Wenchow now. So we got a good look at what we got here. We got a base force, a group army, and a the 100th Chinese Corps, which is a, a formidable unit, right? They have a lot of AV. We'll definitely need to neutralize that somehow. Okay, Kuaite. This should be very easy. Clearing the rail line. So that's, that's what we're trying to do right now. All right. 
Excellent, excellent. Okay, we have a deliberate attack here. This should go pretty easily. Oh, may or not. Actually, it didn't go that well. Looks like the terrain. I think the terrain, they got a little bit of a boost here or something. Um, we don't take a lot of casualties, though. So, I mean, that's okay. We can just wear them down through attrition, I suppose. Man, this is a busy turn, huh? Okay, Lolo Bato, here's another one. Man, I'm just I'm just trying to stay moving here. <sighs> what is that, like ten bases this turn? Alright, let's keep going. And Denny, this one should go pretty easily. Another one, man. <laughs> I need to chill out a little bit, right? All right. Have we got anything else? Is there anything else? <sighs> Let's keep going. Huh. Wow. Well, that was definitely a turn. A lot of stuff happening here. Wow, <laughs> that was a lot of a lot of activity, huh? Let's take a look at it. Well, there's our first loss on the ground this campaign. I guess um, I guess we're not invincible. Yeah. All right. Aircraft losses this turn. Five for us, two for him. We lost a Lily, a Sally, a Tina, a Nell, a Jake. He lost a couple of Catalinas. Top pilots. Unfortunately, two more killed pilots because <laughs> Japanese pilots are very fragile. Uh, Army losses this turn. Uh, probably the worst day for the Allies yet. They lost 105 points. We've lost two. And those two are more than likely coming from the paratroopers that got overrun at Kabanatuan. Ship sunk this last turn. We got the President Madison, which I was gunning for last turn. Uh, we, we killed the Manitowatni and the governor right near Iwo Jima and that was by this guy over here really proud of them we also caught up to the Shinai and the Chengtu okay uh, let's see for the turn we gained an additional 245 points bringing the allied win ratio down to 3.796 and chipping away at it nice and slow okay Let's fire up the old combat reporter and see what we got this turn. Start with sea activity. We had the torpedo boats near Pakoi take out Chengtu. And this one was really fun. The Mikazuki. This single destroyer took out the governor right with a single torpedo hit and put 25 shells in the Manatawani. Manatawi. Manatawani. And we sank it. Let's take a look at that ship. It's out here in the Philippine Sea. Um, and Commander Maeda Sanejo. Decent captain. Nothing nothing crazy there, right? Uh, the crew, however, very experienced. So this is a good destroyer. 
Let's go ahead and get these guys heading back down to... Uh, we'll have them return to Minato. We can do all the army we need there. So, good for them. Good kills. I'm going to start following this ship. This is going to be one of my spirit animal ships, the Mikazuki. Hopefully we can get it to last a long time this campaign. Alright, what else we got? Uh, let's take a look at Other, which was just a naval bombardment of Kaviang, which didn't hurt anything. On the ground, Wen Chao, we landed here, but we'll talk about that in the amphibious stuff. Tulagi, well, you saw all this stuff earlier. We had a lot of victories this turn. None of these were super exciting, except for the stuff in Malaya, perhaps. I didn't think these two SNLF units would do as well as they did taking out these units here. So the 8th Indian Brigade and the 3rd ISF Base Force were pretty badly mauled. And we're pushing them down the road towards Timolo. So we'll keep advancing on that front just to apply some downward pressure on the Allies. But yeah, that went very well. Let's see. That's not exciting. Oh, Georgetown definitely was. Uh, so we completely eradicated the entire uh, force there. I had hoped to not kill them off entirely. I wanted to pursue them, but I, I guess I just overestimated how much force I needed. Or the fact that they're highly disrupted, low morale, and low experience, and up against armor. It may have just been too much for them, so that's, that's all she wrote for these guys. But uh, we'll talk about it when I go around the map. This definitely clears the road for us to get down now this is what we really needed so once we have Taiping we're really set which we should have in two turns all right amphibious so we landed at Wenchow and <laughs> this was a little bit of a mistake I had not intended for this to go in this turn but hey we're here and it couldn't it could be a good thing and I'll show you why in a little bit we landed at Shortlands Rambutio Nikunel Malban and this is a big one in the Philippines. We'll talk about that in a minute. And Madang. Air. Wow. I don't have a lot of nice things to say about the air today. Again, for the third day in a row, we had many, many, many uh, bombing missions canceled. Takao, nothing flew out of there to Hong Kong for the third day. And that's why we have not taken Hong Kong yet. I am convinced the bombers had flown from Takao, we would have Hong Kong right now, but nothing flew. And I and I, I I guess it's weather related. I don't really know, but it's super frustrating because I want Hong Kong. I need these troops for other things, and we're wasting time. Uh, none of these air missions were particularly uh, helpful, except that we know that there is a construction regiment here. Um, let's see here. We know that there is a. Group Army Headquarters there. Let's see. Anything else we need to look at? No. Bombing there. I Chang. Yeah. That, that's really all I can point out to you there. Sigint. Uh, take a look at this. Radio transmissions at Nanyang. Uh, I, I don't know why. I'm wondering if I don't think it's because they have any troops there, so I don't really know why there's radio transmissions there. Well, okay, I take that back. It says enemy units equals one. That must be why, right? It's got to be why. Enemy units equals one. So something to get into Nanyang there. Tacoma, this could be the start of a task force forming up or something else. Tra heavy radio transmissions at LA. We'll take a look at that. That could be a task, uh, a convoy forming up. Something up in uh, Russia. Tacoma, again, another mention. So that might be actionable. And uh, Malay Belay on Mindanao. My guess is just moving troops into there because it's a good place to hold up. It's time street terrain. Let's take a look at Tacoma and LA real quick. So Tacoma. Or Takuma in my map here. Not much I can I can glean from that. L.A. Uh, there's still not a not a lot of information there. Yeah, there's not really enough for us to act on. Okay. Man, I I don't like Japanese again. 
Okay, op support. Uh, here is a list of all the bases we took this turn. Georgetown, Tulagi, Kavmiang, Milne Bay, Hollandia, Kwaite, Kesmara, Lolobato, Indeni, and Nikunau. I believe that's 10. That's the record for me. Oh, and we also grabbed Vegan on the Philippines. So make that 11 bases we captured this turn. That's kind of cool. That's that's definitely a record for me. I've never, I've never uh, captured that many before. So... In one day. Alright. Uh, let's see. Repairs. It looks like we got quite a bit of ships. Coming together. At Hiroshima. And Tokyo. I'm guessing these are AKs that have converted into AKTs. I'm pretty sure that's what they are. So let's look. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I guess they were just ships that were had some system damage that finally got repaired. Okay, nothing exciting there then. I was hoping we'd see some AKTs. Maybe some of these might be it. Yeah, see. Maybe that. I don't know. Whatever. I don't want to waste any more time on this. Let's see here. Oh, let's take a look at the sub. So there's nothing particularly noteworthy on the sub report, but I just want to draw your attention to this area down here. What the heck is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven enemy subs around Minato. He definitely knows this is one of our major bases of operations. So he's flooding up with subs. However, you notice that this turn, none of his subs actually attacked. I think it's because we've got a pretty healthy ASW operation going on here. We've got these Jakes flying ASW here. And we also have, if I can find it. Where is it? Oh, oh, these guys just got in. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Disband. Um, let's see here. Where is it? Right here. This AV is, is assembled, right? And now I have the Pete's flying ASW missions as well. So we have quite a few aircraft. Now, they're not very good at it, but they're still out spotting stuff. We've got a lot of aircraft flying ASW right now. So we're spotting all these guys. And basically, when we have visibility on these guys, it helps my ships avoid them. Like, hey, think of it this way. The, the ASW pilots are out there radioing in, signaling in the locations of subs they spotted on the surface. And they'll get a hold of these guys at sea and let them know, like, hey, there's a sub 10 miles to your west. Go the other way. Right? So that's how these guys are able to basically drive right through here. Right? Um, that being said, it would probably be uh, wise to not intentionally go through the subs like this. So I'd probably want to come up and down. Because this is a known path of subs. So if I go up a little bit and come down... It gives me a better chance to avoid them, right? Same with these guys. Oh, they're, they're retreating. These battleships have no escort, so I actually need them to not go that way. So we'll probably redirect them around. But yeah, the ASW aircraft appear to be helping my ships not get hit by these subs. Because we're keeping, the, keeping them basically pinned down. Okay. Uh, I think that's it for the ops report stuff and combat report. Let's go around the map. So... In China, uh, a lot of little victories today. And one of the big things that I'm really happy about is we've cleared the rail line basically from Shanghai all the way down to Fusan. And why is that important? Well, I'm trying to develop Fusan into a major port for shipping resources out of China. Uh, because it has the shortest distance to go between Fusan and Fukuoka and Shimonoseki. If I can get the resources to flow here... Uh, I don't have to use as many convoys and burn as much fuel. And this was actually Desert Wolf's suggestion to me. I didn't really come up with this. I've always known to use Fusan, but in the past I've used Port Arthur, Kaijo, Shanghai, a bunch of different bases to draw resources out of there. And apparently you don't need to do that if you have good rail lines and you train the draw. You train the game to know that this is where all the resources are needed, so they're naturally going to start flowing that direction. And to uh, accompany that, we're also working on expanding the port. And we can go up to a size 8 port, which is pretty big. Right now, we're limited by our dock capacity at the size 4 port. 
every size we go up, we're going to gain more uh, docking capacity. And hopefully, we're going to start flowing more resources into this base every turn. The bigger the port, the bigger the draw. The more ships drawing, the more the game is going to sense that and start taking resources out of places like Shanghai and all these little little places that make resources. And it will start railing them for me. Dang mosquito in here. Hold on. Let me get this guy. I got him. Ugh. Stupid mosquitoes. It's that time of year in California. Ugh. Oh, that was gross. <laughs> okay. Um, that was a juicy one. Uh, when I build up the, the base here, and look how many engineers we've got here. Jeez. This place is coming up really quick. When we get to size 8 port, hopefully we can start drawing enough resources through here that I only can operate out of here. Anyway, that's why I'm glad I cleared the rail line here. And plus, that gives us unabated access to get Quang 10 Army units in and out, assuming we pay political points, of course, into a very major area of operations. So, yeah, this was a good win. Uh, we cleared this road hex here. We cleared Kwaite, so now we have uh, basically uh, complete and total rail line coverage in all the most important places we need them right now. So, uh, the other thing that's pretty important here <clears throat> is, uh, well, basically this. We landed the 21st Division in all its glory. I think there's still a little bit left on the ships here. Let's take a look at that. There's just a tiny little bit of troops left, right? Um, but we landed the 21st Division in Wenchow. I kind of messed up. I didn't want them to go in quite yet. Maybe one or two more turns later. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm kind of glad we did. Because we have two more units bearing down here. One is a construction regiment, but the other one's probably... Uh, a large uh, infantry regiment or div or core and I really want to reduce Wen Chao before he has a chance to get more troops in here and turn this into a fortress because that times two terrain is no joke uh, we do have more AV here but if you think about it he can take his AV and multiply it by three with that times three defense modifier so I really want to get Wen Chao taken and I thought the best way to do it was to get the 21st division down here quickly um, but I didn't coordinate it super great and they came in now, but that's fine. We'll start attacking next turn. We'll see how it goes. There's only one unit here that has any assault value. It's the hundredth core, I believe. And they're not very well trained. They don't have good morale. They had hardly any artillery. So we stand a decent chance of inflicting casualties. And with the base being as beat up as it is, I'm almost certain they have almost no fort, no fort level there. So we're going to be doing straight attack value right to... The troops. So I'm going to start hitting the next turn. And if by some miracle we can dislodge these guys soon. Um, it would be a big win for me. And then we can really just start mopping up the rest of these units. Because they're already moving to block them in. We're, we're, we're basically surrounding this pocket here. And once we reduce it. Uh, we can take all these troops and shift them back to the west. Obviously Hong Kong is still not going too great. Uh, reason being is that my stupid bombers from Takao won't fly. I don't know what to do about it. I is this bad weather indicator the reason they didn't fly? I don't know. But I have bombers chilling here for three days doing nothing when I could have had them doing other things. And it's just driving me nuts that I can't get them to perform. I need these bombers to hit these troops so I can disrupt them enough to take the base. They have no fort level left in Hong Kong, right? So we got that going for us. Uh, we just need to take these guys out. That's pure and simple. We must win next turn. Because I don't want to keep dealing with this. Okay. In Burma, we hit Rangoon last turn and found out that he's got some PBY-4s here. And I'm almost certain those PBY-4s came out of the Philippines. And I don't... I Help me understand this, guys. What is he doing? I get that he's doing the Sir Robin thing. I get that he's trying to to save everything he can and, and ball it up into one big glob of troops that we have to deal with, and that's fine. But does he need to do that with the aircraft too? Look at this. Guys, nothing is sighted. Nothing is spotted. Nothing. He has no naval search out here anywhere. He could easily run naval search out of Cagayan, 
uh, Deval, heck, Baton, Manila. He can run naval search from any one of these bases, and he's not doing it. Look at this. Nothing is sighted. Nothing. And there should be uh, recon planes at Ambon. There should be recon planes at Kandari that can see all this stuff. Look at it. Nothing is sighted. I don't get. I don't get it. Look at this. Not sighted. Not sighted. I don't understand it. So, um, I understand wanting to build up a defensive perimeter and shepherd your forces, but why not leave some naval search up at least? It doesn't make any sense to me. He's really depriving himself of some visibility. I've got ships all over the place, and he could probably react to some of the stuff if they knew they were coming. Look at this. I'm going to go ahead and show you this right now. These guys are going into Boila next turn, okay? They're not spotted. There is no good reason why we can't have some Dornier 24s operating out of Ambon right now to see this coming. What if he had some cruisers down here? He could react to this. But he doesn't even know it's there. And I don't really get that that level of defensiveness. It seems a bit extreme to me. And I think he's actually kind of selling himself short. Heck, he could put Dornier 24s and Balak Poppin. I'm not anywhere near getting to that right now. He could be seeing everything out here. And he's elected not to do that. And I think it's a mistake. Unless he really has no intention of defending this at all. And he just wants to let it go. I guess that's fine if that's what he wants to do. But it doesn't seem like an ideal thing to do. That That's my opinion on that matter. So, uh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what... Oh, I don't like that. Uh, let's see. Boundary number two, right there. So I got sidetracked there. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's a good approach, but you know that's fine. Anyway, yeah. So in the meantime, uh, he has completely evacuated Mole Mine, which is crazy to me. Uh, Rangoon doesn't have a lot of. He's not reinforcing Rangoon. He's not trying to get any ships in here. He has hardly any aircraft here. I don't know what the heck. He's just pulling back. He's just retreating. It just seems just seems weird. For lack of a better term, it's just weird. So I'm going to take advantage of it. Hey, if he doesn't want to fight, fine. I'll just take the bases. Because the sooner I cut off Rangoon, the sooner I kill the supply to China. Uh, okay, in the, in the Malayan Peninsula, a couple cool things happened here. We already defeated these guys and drove them down the road. So we're going to keep pushing them into Timolo, which is two naval guard units. That's not much of an investment in force. That's really good. These guys, I'm going to start getting them ready to go with strat moves. I think we can do that, right? Yeah. All right, what, what's on? Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's good. Okay, so we're landing some troops here at uh, Kutubaru to get the... Look at that. The aviation support came way up. So that's going to allow us to fly full-scale operations out of um, Kutubaru. And we're also landing uh, an air division. So that's good. On top of that... Uh, yeah, so we took Georgetown. Okay. And now my armor... Can move into Taiping and they'll be there in a turn. And we have no need to slow down or anything. Because right behind those guys I've got some blocking slash garrison forces coming in here. And, uh, and on top of that I've got 400 and some odd AV coming into Alor Star. Once we destroy this garrison here I can strat move these guys all the way down the peninsula. Because we don't really need more than an armor to make our way down. So let's just get all the way into, let's say, uh, Kuala Lumpur. And then we can take these guys and just strat move them in. So, same thing with the guys at Kotobaru. We can just take these guys and put them in the strat move mode. And let's see, is there anything else here? Okay. Yep, that's basically it for that. But this is starting to come back together. Uh, I feel like we kind of lost our way a little bit here for a couple days at um, in Malaya. But things are back on track. I got these guys about to be surrounded. 
There's basically only one hex for these guys to even retreat into if they wanted to. And it's this one. So hopefully we just kill them outright. But if they don't, these troops may retreat into this hex. And then I'll just have to deal with them later on. It's not the end of the world. I might even set one unit to pursue them just to keep them on the run. Because we should have more than enough uh, force here to kill those guys. But yeah, uh, Malay is back on track and we're working our way down towards Singapore. Sinkawang, we sank a ship out here. Still a little disappointed by the lack of aircraft flying out of here. I think we might be kind of burning our aircraft up. That could be part of the problem. Aircraft data. Wait. Yeah, I think we're starting to ride our aircraft just a little too hard here. That could be part of the reason. But we did get some bombs on target, some torpedoes on target this turn. So the Kuching thing is doing okay. All right, and at Monado, we got a lot of activity. Again, we talked about the subs, but I'm not going to let them slow me down. I'm just grabbing all these little dot bases while I can using a bare minimum amount of force. So I do want to capture all these things, right? Just so he can't use them against me later on. We're going to hit Buelo next turn. And then in about three turns, I got a major operation plan in this area. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. In the Solomon's area, which for all intent and purposes, I include Papua and, and all that. This whole thing to me is called the Solomon's. So whether or not you agree, that's what I'm calling it. We're doing a great job policing up all these bases out here. Uh, as you can see, I'm just capturing dot bases. I have plans to take this one, this one, this one, this one, all of these. Uh, we just landed here. Uh, we'll tighten up Bougainville here in just a little bit. We got a firm grasp on Tulagi. We now own in Denny. So, oh, we got Milne Bay, which is, I don't want the allies to have it right now. I'd rather have it before they can. So we took it. And now we can take this unit and start capping all these other places here. If I were at Port Moresby, I'd be sweating bullets right now because they ain't looking a little exposed. All right. And then out here in the Gilberts, we're doing some good mopping up as well. We have captured Nikunel. We'll grab Beru next turn. And then I think we're going to build up a position on Tapatue because out of all these little dot bases down here, this one appears to be the one to me that has the most value. So I would rather build it up so he doesn't. And then we can have a base here for whatever purposes we need. Ocean Island operation is complete. So these guys are now heading down here to Tulagi to reinforce that because I kind of want to make this a major base. Because you can get the port size up to 6 and the air size up to 5. Lunga, you can get the air base up to size 8. So I do want to take that too. But the port level is very low there. So it kind of makes it hard to get stuff into the place. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Um, moving nice and slow in the Aleutians. I primarily really wanted this place. And now we have some awesome naval search up here. So we'll see anything coming through here and at this time it does not appear he's trying to make any effort to do anything with this so cool cool for me uh yeah so let me know if there's anything else you guys want me to show you in the future uh, if there's something you'd like me to take a deeper dive into i'd be happy to do that um i'll show you what i can as long as it doesn't violate any any kind of basic fundamental uh, opsec principles i'm down to show you so let me know what it is you want to see but yeah um the bottom line here is we had our first ground loss of the campaign over here in the Philippines. And it's definitely indicative of the fact that I may have not really planned out things and timed them right. I may have ex extended a little too far. So we got the forces con congealing here. Um, I don't think I talked about this, but we did land the 33rd Regiment here at Malbon. And if you look at the 33rd Regiment... You'll notice it belongs to the 16th Division, right? And the 16th Division is what is on, um, what do you call this? Uh, Luzon in the Philippines. So I landed here to, to come in here to take Batangas, Batangas, and then we can make it hook a right and go into Manila. And then we have forces coming down this way and we'll trap these guys in a pincer. And my goal for now is to take Manila. As quickly as possible because that light industry there is producing supply for him every turn and the goal here in the philippines is to reduce him 
through starvation and attrition. But I gotta take the supply producing bases in this area first. And make him have to subsist on whatever he's got left here. And it will take a while. But in the grand scheme of things, the Philippines is small potatoes compared to what I gotta do. So I have time to slow roll this, right? Some people go in super heavy in the Philippines. I'm electing this time around to go in kind of light. Maybe the ideal situation is somewhere in the middle. I'm learning, so I'm gonna eventually make I'm gonna make mistakes every now and then, guys. Um, just keep that in mind. This is my first time playing as Japan against a human opponent, so I'm gonna make mistakes. So feel free to call me out, but just have the empathy to know that it's not like I've done this before. So I'm, I learn by the mistakes, and I hope you guys do too. Catch you guys on the next one.